continuing with uh, derivative applications, this is number 9. Uh, y is equal to ax to the fourth plus bx squared. a times b is greater than 0. And if we look at the answer choices, all this is talking about derivative or referring to something that we can pull from the derivative or the second derivative. So let's go ahead and find f prime and f double prime to see if that will help us out. Now remember, a and b are just numeric values, so we'll treat a and b as coefficients. These are not going to be variables, so there's no need for us to go through product rule. Just power rule is enough. So ax to the fourth becomes 4ax cubed. bx squared becomes 2bx. Okay, let's go ahead and find the second derivative. Continuing through, we get 12ax squared. 2bx becomes 2b. So it's asking about horizontal tangents. So horizontal tangents is where f prime is equal to 0. So if we set f prime is equal to 0, um, f prime equal to 0. Well, we know f prime is equal to 0 when x is 0, right? So when x is 0, we're definitely getting a slope 0. So just by kind of looking at it and, and um, um, kind of looking at some of the properties, we, we know that there is a horizontal tangent that exists uh, simply by um, looking at the fact that if x is 0, we're going to be able to guarantee a slope 0. So we can say we know a is false, right? It definitely has a horizontal tangent. It definitely has a place where the f prime is equal to zero. Okay, so all of this about concavity, uh, we have to set f double prime equal to zero if we want to figure out information about critical points so that we can test for con con concavity, concave up, concave down. So if I set f double prime equal to zero, uh, if I try to solve for x, I subtract 2b on the other side, divide both sides by 12a. Uh, so it doesn't quite give me a critical point um, because there's a negative there. So we don't know what a and b values are, but we do know that they both have the same signs. So either they're both positive or they're both negative. Either way, um, uh, it won't change the, the sign of this overall expression. So this is going to remain negative. So if this remains negative, it doesn't matter if these are both positive or both negative, um, I can't take the square root, so there's no point of inflection. Okay. And that we can say is true. Uh, as far as concave up and concave down, uh, we don't have any information because these A and B could be both positive or they could be both negative. And depending on whether what their signs are, uh, we don't know what concavity uh, this uh, this function will give us. But we do know there is no point of inflection since we can't take the square root of a negative value. All right, so answer choice D. All right, number ten. We have a function that's continuous and differentiable. So no breaks in the graph, smooth curve, on the interval from zero to four, where f prime is positive but f double prime is negative. So f prime positive means positive slope. f double prime negative means concave down. Right. Now positive slope, now the nice thing is that all these x values are increasing by 1. So we do change in y over change in x. It's always going to be this number divided by 1. So whatever number we see here is going to be the slope, and that's nice. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, find the slope at, between each of these points. So here we have all 2s. Here we have 2, 3, 4, 5. Here we have 8, 6, 4, 2. And here we have negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And then negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. These are looking at um, just the change in y over change in x at each of the uh, consecutive order pairs. So we need positive slope. So if we need positive slope, that means uh, d and e are out. All right? we're, we're down to a, b, and c but we want f double prime to be negative. So f double prime to be negative means that the slope pattern, even though all the slopes are positive, we're looking for a slope pattern that is uh, decreasing in slope value. So here we have slope 2 followed by slope 2 followed by slope 2 by followed by slope 2. So the slope is not decreasing. Slope 2, slope 3, slope 4, slope 5, the slope is becoming steeper in the positive direction, so this is not going to be concave down. But here, 8 followed by 6 followed by 4 followed by 2. These are all positive slopes, but these, po but these positive slopes are decreasing from left to right. That's going to indicate concave down. So answer choice C. F prime is shown. 
So if f prime is shown and we're asked information about the original function, I'm going to go ahead and label uh, what I'm looking at. So remember, the y-axis of your f prime represents the steepness. The location that is on the f prime is going to ind uh, indicate to you um, the steepness of the original graph. So anything that is sitting above the x-axis will indicate places where my original graph is going to exhibit positive slope. Any, any uh, values below the x-axis indicates where my original graph will exhibit negative slope. Anything on the x-axis will represent where my slope is zero. Okay. So I have my endpoints. I'm going to create my slope sign line. My critical points are at one and three. These are the places where slope is zero. And now we're going to look. Between zero and one, this is located in the negative region, so negative slope. Between 1 and 3, above the x-axis, so positive slope. And then between 3 and 5, still positive slope. So we know that there must be a relative minimum at x equals 1 based off of the, beha the behavior that we see with these arrows. So relative minimum at x equals 1. Part number 12 is asking about points of inflection. So points of inflection, if we're looking at the f prime graph, the peaks and valleys will indicate where the points of inflections are. And then the slope of the f prime is going to indicate where we're going to exhibit, where we're going to see concave up, and negative slope is going to be concave down. So critical points are at two and three. Okay. Wherever my f prime is rising between zero and two, that's going to be concave up. Wherever my f uh, prime graph is decreasing, that's going to indicate where my original graph is concave down. And then wherever my f prime is rising here again, concave up. We know these are points of inflections at 2 and 3 because there's a change in sign and concavity. So uh, we have 2 and 3 that are points of inflections. Okay, number 13. We have f prime graph shown. And we're trying to gather information about continuity and differentiability. So this is the f prime graph. Again, f prime indicates the steepness of the original graph. So we see that even though this is rising and falling, all these are in the positive regions. So all this represents locations where I have positive slope. Okay, positive slope of my original function. So that means all these points indicates where the slope exists, right? Uh, different values of slope, but these are all places where slope exists. So if the slope exists, then function has to be continuous. Okay, so we know that this is not true. Function is continuous but not differentiable. Now the tricky thing is that we do see a sharp turn. We do see a sharp point. So we may be thinking, wait, this is not differentiable if it's a sharp turn. So let me make a distinction here. F prime is what's not differentiable. F prime is the one that's not a smooth curve. But we're talking about the original function. The original function is continuous and is differentiable because uh, every point is going to exist and every slope is going to exist. So even though f prime is not differentiable at x equals 1, um, this sharp turn is not indicative of the fact that f of x is not differentiable. f of x is differentiable uh, because f prime exists at x equals a. There, That's a particular slope value. So if a slope exists on the graph, then our function is differentiable. So we got to be careful with uh, with that sharp turn. Our function has a relative max at x equals a, so this is not a relative max for the original function. Peaks and valleys for f prime indicates where the point of inflection is for my original function. Okay, And so that goes to part d. We know there's a point of inflection at x equals a because our graph goes from concave up to concave down since we're looking at the f prime graph. Okay, last one here, number 14. Given f prime as graphed, which could be the graph of f. So let's gather information about the original function looking at the f prime graph. Again, anything above the x-axis indicates where my original graph is positive slope. Below the x-axis is negative slope. Anything on the x-axis is slope 0. So we know the critical point is at 1 and 3. To between 0 and 1, the graph uh, f prime is above the x-axis, so positive slope. Between 1 and 3, negative slope, below the x-axis. 
and we know points of inflection, concavity, um, any peaks and valleys it will be points of inflection. So we know there's a point of inflection at x equals 2. The slope of the f prime graph indicates whether the original graph is going to exhibit concave up or concave down. So all this is negative slope. So negative f prime slope is going to translate to concave down. A positive slope on the f prime graph is going to translate to concave up. So I'm going to create a graph that has these characteristics. I'm going to create a graph where I have a relative max at x equals 1 and where my graph is um, increasing followed by decreasing. Now, as I increase and decrease, I'm going to give a little bit more um, a more subtlety at x equals 2. At x equals 2, there's a point of inflection, so I want my graph to change from a concave down to a concave up, but still maintaining this negative slope all the way through. But there's a slight change in curvature from concave down to concave up. So this may not be perfectly matching with my graph, but this should be enough for me to, to get a good idea as to one that could match, even if my y values are not the same. So I'm looking for a relative max at 1, I'm looking for a point of inflection at x equals 2, concave down followed by concave up, and the only graph that's going to exhibit that those behaviors is going to be um, graph C.